Hello everybody, I have Jen with me today and we are going to be talking about something that's super applicable to everyone right now, taking our annual in-person event and turning it into a virtual summit this year. But before we dive into my questions for you, Jen, would you mind giving everybody a quick introduction? Sure. Hello, everyone. Uh, as Emma mentioned, I'm Jen Hine, the Marketing Director for Navient. We have been doing the summit for 17 years. This is our first year that we're doing it virtually. Uh, we have a huge turnout for us, 250 plus people that um, are in person, travel from around the United States to attend. And yeah, so this year is a whole new ballgame for us. I'm, I'm excited about it, though. Wonderful. Thanks, Jen. So first question that I have for you, obviously, when we decided that we were going to switch the event to a virtual event, we needed to figure out how we were going to facilitate that and look at platforms. So when you were trying to decide how we were going to host this event, what was on the top of your list from like a capability standpoint? Sure. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's so many different things to consider, but a great user experience that was at a competitive price was probably the most important thing for us. We wanted something that would provide that same experience that you get in person, but in a virtual environment and um, making it really easy to use. We wanted a platform that someone could just log into once and be in all day. We knew we wanted um, that ability to show video sometimes for the attendees to be able to talk to one another or ask questions. We wanted a main stage, just like you'd have, just imagine like a general session where everyone can go and gather and hear from a keynote or hear from you know leaders in our organization. So we wanted that ability. Uh, we host workshops. That was important to be able to, I mentioned showing video earlier, but just that collaborative session where you might have 10 customers that want to collaborate and talk and having a room and space for that was really important um, for us as well. But, you know, we looked at platforms that were from like $75,000 a day to some that were just $3 per day per user. So, there's a wide variety of options out there, but that user experience at a cost competitive price was definitely one of our most important points. Um, and then I would say too, just to add to that, just that stability in the platform. I didn't want to pick a new platform for us. Our customers and prospects have come to know the Navient um, experience to be very high quality, have great speakers. And I didn't want that tainted with a technology that just wasn't reliable. So we went with one that also had a support um, program wrapped around it, where we'll have a live person online with us as well. That was, again, very affordable, but um, a big event for us um, and for our, our guests that choose to spend those two days with us. So I, we wanted to make sure it um, is an easy experience for them to attend and there's no technical difficulties. Wonderful. Um, when you did have to kind of make that call again to move to a virtual event, I guess what was your biggest concern or um, hesitancy with moving to a virtual platform versus holding an in-person event? Yes. So um, I think everyone is experiencing like Zoom fatigue right now. So that ability to keep people engaged throughout the conference was huge for us. So that definitely was the biggest concern for me. Um, I now having been through the work of reviewing the platforms and seeing what's available, I would tell everyone there's no issue with that. You will definitely be able to get a similar experience with these virtual platforms. Um, we did choose to shorten ours. So it's typically a two day full day days event. We changed it to just be half days. We actually, and I would recommend this to anyone, poll your customers or your guests and ask them what they prefer. And resoundingly, they said absolutely a four-hour, half-day um, conference would be the best option. And then we shortened our session time. They're usually an hour. We shortened them to a half an hour and felt like we're going to have our content that we normally have, and we're going to cut it in half. And we're going to cut it in half again, so you're only getting the key content. We realize attention spans are so much less in a virtual environment than in person, so we're accommodating that with a tightened schedule. We'll give people 15-minute breaks in between so they can still check email or you know 
you know, be engaged outside of the conference yet still participate. So the other thing I think we've learned from attending a few virtual events ourselves is to tell your clients to just to block their calendars. I think that's really important um, so they can be fully present and they're not having the expectation that they can be um, interrupted. I think as a presenter, I'm excited for different ways to be able to engage with people. And I know the platform that we've got has polling capabilities. And like you mentioned before, the ability to have that interaction and that um, give and take with other customers so that you don't lose that networking. And that's, I think, really exciting. Sure. Yeah, I think the networking piece, um, just real quick, that a lot of platforms offer this, that one-on-one -on -one networking. So it's it works like it's speed dating, really. You set a time, we're choosing three minutes because we've just done the research and that's about um, what most of the platforms recommend. But it puts you in a room with a random attendee that kind of matches your skill set or you know your profile, I guess. And you talk to each other for three minutes, get to know each other. And at the end, it's like a business card exchange, you click a button if you like that person and you feel like you want to professionally connect with them. Um, and it does that. So many platforms did offer that functionality. And I think that's gave us a lot of comfort for that networking piece for customers to connect with one another or search people out at the event and still have that video connection piece. So that's, that's a cool feature. That is exciting. I like the speed dating analogy. When I was a teacher, Activities like that too. So I'm a big fan. Um, so I know I've talked to you a little bit about your hesitancies and concerns, but now I want to switch it on ahead and ask about what are you most excited about having the event virtual this year? Yes, um, I think it's just an opportunity to be able to reach customers from all over. We a business earlier in the year that kind of has more of a Western United States footprint. And rather than having those people have to travel to our event, they can all just join um, and get the same experience that all of our other clients that have been able to travel or have been just been able to attend um, get to experience. So furthering our reach, uh, not having travel expenses for any customers at a time when people are cutting back um, with anyway, just on expenses, it's a great way to be able to bring education to them and reach everyone in our footprint. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. I mean, undoubtedly, COVID-19 has changed the way um, all of our worlds work right now. So to be able to provide something that is a slightly different experience, yet still the same amount of education is really exciting and feel good about well, I think I speak for everyone at Navient for saying thank you for all the work that you guys and your marketing team have done to be able to give us the opportunity to still connect with our um, our customers and our prospects, even though things are a little different right now. So anybody that's watching, I will include a link for you to check out our agenda and hopefully register to join us for our summit and learn something new. Um, but with that, Jen, thank you for joining me and have a wonderful day, everyone.